um, talking about chess in the classroom given by school teachers, not by chess players, the method which is working better, as far as I know, is the transversal and interdisciplinary method. Transversal means, for instance, chess combined with emotional intelligence, which is transversal to all subjects. This is another subject of conversation, very interesting one indeed. But now I'm going to talk about the interdisciplinary method, giving a very concrete example. How to explain the history of artificial intelligence through chess. Now, the first thing to do, in my opinion, is to create a very nice atmosphere in the classroom. For that, I suggest two stories. The first one is the very famous legion of wheat grains. Um, I'm not going to tell you the whole story because I don't have time for that, but if you uh, look at it in the internet, you will find very easily the whole story. What is very important to emphasize is that this story helps us to introduce huge magnitudes. Because at the end of that story, of that legend, if you put one grain of wheat in the first square of the chessboard, two in the second, four in the third, eight in the fourth, and you double the number, at the end of it, you have this number of grains. I am unable to read this in English because in Spanish, one billion is one million of millions. But in English, one billion is 1,000 million. So I don't know how to read this in English. Anyway, <laughs> if you put all those grains in enormous ships, you will need 8 million ships to store those grains. If you put all those ships in a queue in the sea, you will need seven times around the Earth, the, the queue of the ships will be 17 times around the Earth. Rem uh, please remember these big numbers. This is the concept, okay? Now, the second story I will use to create a nice atmosphere in the classroom will be the Turk from Kempelen that, was, that takes us to the 18th century in the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. And a very famous inventor, Kempelen, invented a machine which was playing chess. I'm not going to tell you the details, but I fully recommend you to, to look for it and to read it, because it's very nice and very interesting. At the end, he was cheating, but he was cheating in a very creative way. A chess player was inside the machine. Okay, so I want to underline with this that creating a machine which was able to play chess was a kind of obsession for inventors for many years, even for centuries. Now, we are going to the core of the story. 1947, Alan Turing and Claude Shannon are the main fathers of artificial intelligence. Both of them thought that chess could be a very good field of uh, experimenting artificial intelligence. In the case of Alan Turing, he had a personal reason for that. Because now we come back a little bit, 1939, Chess Olympiad in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Suddenly, the English team has to withdraw because the Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, has ordered the three strongest English players Golombek, Alexander, and Milner Barry to come back urgently to London to meet Alan Turing and to work on something extremely secret. That was the Enigma operation. The goal was breaking the Nazis' communication code. They were very successful, 
and that saved a lot of, I mean, several millions of lives, most likely. What I want to underline here is that Alan Turing was working intensively with three chess grandmasters for a long time. So that inspired him probably a lot. But besides on that, you have to, we have to come back to the immense magnitudes and numbers. Both Turing and Shannon thought, OK, if there are more possible chess games than atoms in the known universe, that is a very good starting point. And look at the numbers, look at the numbers. The number of atoms in the known universe is one followed by 80 zeros. But the number of possible chess games is much bigger. And if we go to Go, a very popular uh, board game in Asia, then the number of possible games is even bigger than in chess. We, you will understand very soon why Go is also important in this story. So they thought, we have to make the best chess player a machine. But how much time do we need to get that? I think, I guess, their estimation was much shorter than actually what happened. Because it took 50 years until this happened. I was there. This news were first page in practically all newspapers all over the world. The IBM shares, IBM was the owner of Deep Blue, the IBM shares were skyrocket at the New York Stock Exchange that day. But even more important than that, when IBM dismantled Deep Blue, he took advantage of what they had learned from chess by beating Kasparov in several fields where the common factor is molecular calculation, like production of complex medicines. I mean, when we go now to the pharmacy to buy a complex medicine, probably we are taking advantage of what IBM learned by beating Kasparov or stock exchange calculation, weather forecast, agriculture planning, etc. Now, at that moment, this man, Demis Hassavis, was a child prodigy, well, have been a child prodigy in chess, but at that moment, he was like graduating, finishing his uh, university studies in the United Kingdom, and fortunately for the humankind, he didn't choose chess, he chose science. And he was kind of obsessed with improving what IBM did with Deep Blue. Deep Blue had inside about, I don't know how many million games in a database. For instance, now, in 2024, in my laptop, I have about 11 million chess games. So, Deep Blue was programmed from that base. But Demis Hassavis had a very different idea. He created DeepMind, Google bought DeepMind, and then what he did was the following. He learned, I mean, AlphaZero, his new program, learned chess in less than a day without databases at all, playing millions of games against itself. And of course, learning during that, along that process. The result of that was a match between AlphaZero and the strongest chess program so far at that moment, Stockfish, and the result was 27-0. That was December 17. And then, the question at that moment was, OK, for chess, I mean, for chess from technical point of view, this is going to be very important. Actually, next month, January, Magnus Carlsen changed his style in the Vikansai tournament in the Netherlands, inspired 
by alpha zero. But the big question was, will there be a transfer to more important fields of science, as it happened before with Deep Blue? And the answer is a very big yes. This is one of the most important breakthroughs in the history of biology. The biggest experts in the world in biology thought before that, just before that, that that was going to be impossible in the next century. But they did it, I think, at the end of 2020. Why uh, predicting the protein's structure is so important? Well, protein is a, an essential element for life. And why is that so important? Well, because, for instance, the last uh, progress against life cancer is due to what they achieved by uh, understanding the structure of proteins. Or the same happens with antidepressant medicines. Now, we know for sure that right now there are thousands of researchers all over the world who are working in many different fields of science to take advantage of this very extremely, I will say, important discovery about proteins. So most likely in the next months or just very few years, we are going to see fantastic things in many fields, especially in medicine. And Chess and Go have made a big contribution because I didn't te uh, tell you something important. Proteins are composed by amino acids. And the number of possible combinations of amino acids inside a protein is a very big number, like those numbers. So Chess and Go are contributing very much to the progress of science. Thank you very much.